Samara watched as this attack failed. And his whole army hesitated. But he took this moment to step forward himself. He stepped forward right up, going right up to the Bodhisattva. And he said, <clears throat> What right do you have to do this? Who are you? Who are you to do this? Who has given you permission to break free of my realm? Who is your witness that you're in a position to gain liberation? Many of you know this question very well. Mara uses it on you. And it generally works, doesn't it? Who are you to do this? You're no one. Don't do it. And we say, oh yeah, right. I probably shouldn't break free of all this. That's a good point. I'm not a person who can gain independence from injustice and suffering. I'm not really sure actually what that would be anyway. I think I should probably just keep on following your rules for a while longer while I figure it out. Thanks for bringing that up. He says, no problem. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm always here for you. Well, the Bodhisattva had a different answer. And he had this answer because of a long period of hard work. And Mara asked him this question, who supports you in this? Who is your witness that you are in a position to take this step. He finally responded, didn't he? He finally responded. He finally moved because he could move in relationship to a friend. And he reached down and he touched the earth that he was sitting on. And you'll see this <coughs> Bhumi Sparsha uh, position, this mudra. One hand is in his lap, the other hand is just touching uh, the earth. No, you can't see it like this. Just touching the earth with one finger. And he called the earth to be his support and to be his, his witness. And I have to ask, can we, have we earned that, right? Have we treated the earth appropriately for long enough? What would happen if we reached down and touched the earth? Remember what happened to the other people who did all those terrible things? Like the guy who cut out the tusk of the elephant? The earth opened up and ate him. Threw him down into the fire. The earth doesn't just support anyone. Now in a certain way, of course, the earth is above all that and the earth does support everyone. That is true. The Buddha at one point said you should cultivate a mind like the great earth, supporting everyone even if they spit on you and defecate on you. But are we in a position to reach down and touch Grandmother Earth? It's only for us to ask, because at a moment like this you need a witness. Mara is not kidding around. He will find his way in. And you may need help. And even at this time, the Bodhisattva needed help. Isn't it incredible? He's done all this work. And then the last thing of everything is that he asks for help from someone else. He got help already from Sujata, of course, when she gave him some food. And then he asks, please, I need some support here. 
It's essential that we give ourselves to having someone we can count on in a moment like that. And the earth is a good support. So we touch the earth, and the earth shook, stating, yes, I am his witness. She made that statement right in front of Mara. And Mara had nothing more. And he hesitated. And at this time in the Buddha Charita, Ashvagosha has a magnificent exchange between a god of a heaven higher than Mara's heaven coming down and telling him, give up. And it's an opportunity to praise the Bodhisattva once more. And I'll just tell you a bit of this beautiful poem this great God <laughs> offers at the time. He said, fire might lose its heat, and <clears throat> water might lose its moisture. The earth might lose its solidity. The air might lose its uh, flow, its movement. But he, this Bodhisattva, will not lose his resolution or his compassion. He will never lose it. Even when this universe ends and all of these elements lose their own inherent qualities, which does happen according to the Buddhist framework. Even all of this, it, even that isn't permanent. And yet, his resolution, his compassion is unbreakable. And then he said, the Bodhisattva will not rise without wisdom any more than the sun rises without dispelling the darkness. It is completely impossible. This is what it says here. Yes, they become filled with the elements of enlightenment. In this abode here, the paramita of prajna becomes paramount. This wisdom is gained. And upon hearing this, finally, Mara himself fled. His army is scattered. And it's wonderful the way it puts it with what happens next. I love the, I love the, this, this, this description. And Mara fled some distance, and then he hunched down, slumped over, depressed and despondent, scratching the ground with a stick.